Hi everyone, my name is Dan Scott and we are going to start uh, a frequently asked questions about Webflow. Uh, there's lots of questions about it. What does it do? Who's it for? Let's go through all of these. This is a live stream, so if you are watching live, drop your questions into the chat and I will answer them in a sec. So we'll get started with some canned answers, the most, uh, the most frequent ones I get asked, okay, common ones about Webflow. So uh, what does Webflow do? It, we, you know, what does it do? It's a website builder. Okay, it is a way of taking your designs and building it in what's called a low code slash no code uh, way and then delivering it to the internet or to your client. Okay, so that's what it does. It builds websites. Why should you learn Webflow? It's for people who, like me, want to build, you know, like, like to, want to take on the web design work, enjoy the experience, want to get into the experience, want to expand their repertoire of things they can charge clients, or just like the idea of getting into web design. Webflow is a great place to get started, especially if you are a little bit timid around code. You can be a really good coder and still get lots of value out of Webflow, okay? But if you are skinny pants about web, um, code, then this is the perfect product for you. And why is Webflow so popular right now? It fills this really, this niche that I didn't think needed to be filled until I saw it and realized how good it was. There's on one side the uh, super hardcore coding it yourself way, okay? My Web Essentials course, if you've done that in VS Code or Dreamweaver or whatever, you know, Sublime Text, that is the code way okay, of building it. And, you know, that is one way and for a certain group of people and that is an amazing uh, way of doing it. And then over here was this kind of Wix, Squarespace, no code, template based way, okay? And that was great as long as you want to use the templates. If you, you could make adjustments to them, but you couldn't really, uh, you couldn't make it your own or, you know, properly change it, okay? And that's where Webflow came in, where it's still quite a little bit drag and droppy, okay? But you have to understand a little bit of the fundament, uh, fundamentals of web design, okay, through a no-code way. And that's what I'll do in my course, Webflow Essentials. Check it out on bringerandlaptop.com, okay? It is, it fills this lovely group uh, of, I need to actually build a serious website, okay? And it needs to look exactly how I want it to do and do all the things I want it to do without, you know, having to go out to a developer to do it, okay? Because it might be out of my skill set. It's definitely out of mine, okay? And with the template-based site, you're kind of restricted to like, oh, okay, hopefully they don't change this template too much because you can't change it. So that's where it sits. And um, uh, that's why it's popular right now. It fills that gap. And it's just perfect like for uh, first time web designers and people that want to do like professional long-term websites. That's where it fits in. Uh, where does it sit in the process? So that is a good point. Uh, it's not a web design, it's not the design part, it's the build part. Okay, so you will design it and get clients, so say a client comes to me and says, hey, I need a website. You go, great. I wouldn't start in Webflow. You could, but like building a house starting with like a hammer and nails, that's, you could build a house <laughs> straight up with wood and nails and a hammer and <laughs> go to town. You'd end up with a really ugly house. It'd need to change lots all, all along the way. And it's really hard to change things after you've poured the concrete and started <laughs> nailing trusses up. So what you do, <coughs> Webflow is the building part. You do the design in something else. It'd be really typical to do the design in something like uh, Figma or Adobe XD or Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever you can in a design tool because those tools are really easy to design in. You can just jiggle them around and you're like, mm, logo goes here, down here, over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can do that and then say, here, client. And like with Figma and XD, which are kind of UX design tools, okay, prototyping tools, it's really easy to prototype and you can make it look like a website and feel like a website to a certain degree. So clients can, like, you can go out to user testing, okay, get feedback on clients from your various stakeholders until they all say, yep, we love it, now go build it. Like building a house from plans, it's really easy to build in Webflow when you know what it's gonna look like, you know the colors, you know what buttons go where, the language, then you build it in Webflow. That's where it sits. And Webflow will output it and host it and do all of that good stuff, okay? So that's where it sits, kind of the end, the build part of web design. Design it something else, whatever you can. Uh, Microsoft Paint, Word, PowerPoint, don't do any of those things. But, you know, in some other tool and then build it in WordPress. Uh, not WordPress, Webflow. Okay, WordPress, let's talk about that. Freudian slip, okay, where does it sit with these two? 
So WordPress is amazing. It powers a lot of the internet, okay? And where does Webflow sit? So WordPress is good for two groups, but it misses the middle. So it's great if you have, say a client comes to me and they just want, and it's some, you know, like, let's say somebody comes to me and they're like, I just want something like this. And they're not really, I see something bang something up quick. I can go to WordPress, install it, get it going. There's some cool plugins to make everything happen. And I can do that quite quickly, okay? But then if I need to start customizing it, that's where the gap is in the middle. I can't often do it myself. I can wriggle my way around and get things to work, but really I need help from a WordPress developer. So great for just templates. Great if you've got help from a developer. It's that middle bit where I like to have the full control. That's where Webflow sits. You can start Webflow from templates, which is great, but you can customize them completely or build from scratch. So that's where it sits in comparison. Some people love WordPress. WordPress is probably broader, or is a lot broader. There's a lot more plugins for it. It's got a big community behind it. And um, so you rely on other people to do stuff, which is cool. And that's one of the amazing powers of WordPress, where Webflow is a lot of self-creation. Like they have a lot of tools, okay? And you can build it all yourself and own it all yourself. You don't have to worry about like third-party plugins and you just do it all. WordPress make, uh, Webflow makes it great. So that's where it sits. It's an alternative to it. Yes. And another one, who is it for? So Webflow is for people who, you can be like, it's kind of like two main groups, somebody that's building their own website, say you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner, you're like, I just want to, I want all the control. Don't, I don't want to go out to this person and that person, I just want to do it all myself, okay? And I want it to look like this. It'd be great. Okay, you can build it, work your way through a few tutorials. I know a guy who has a few tutorials, link in the description. Um, uh, you know, so check out, you know, so, so great for that person, a one-off website, perfect. Um, where it's getting used mostly is by designers who have to build stuff for clients. And in the past, they might have either designed it in something like Figma or XD. Um, I know a guy with courses on those two, if you're not sure what they are. Uh, but say, say you design them, um, they would then hand them off to a developer to get done because it's like, yeah, it's in the too hard basket. Or, yeah, they'd have to use a template, even using WordPress or Wix or Squarespace or the other ones in that similar sort of category. Whereas now they can do fully custom, they can start building shops, they can start building CMSs with, you know, blogs and client. Like what I really love about it is that I can build something that my client can update, they can log in, Webflow, Webflow makes it all power, you know, allows you all that power where they can log in and you design all the like styles and all the things they can input, but they can start you know, loading up their own products, they can start loading up their own blog posts, their own team members, you can make it all editable, completely editable, and give them like page building ability, it's amazing. So that's who it's for. A lot of designers who want to take ownership of that work, and there's a lot of projects now where they're just, you know, there's still times where you need to go out to developer because it's new or Webflow doesn't do it, okay? And, but there's, a, there's like 80 or 90% of those kind of jobs that come through are either a freelancer or a small design studio where you don't have an in-house developer that Webflow really nails it. It's great. Um, yes, great for a portfolio as well if you want it custom. Um, who's for what kind of sites you can build? I've kind of already covered that. Um, static sites, CMS sites, blog sites, stores, membership sites are coming out. Um, it's a, it's in beta at the moment. I gotta I gotta look at that, but it's not out in the full version yet. You can build your own membership site, like bring your own laptop kind of thing. Okay, that's coming out. Um, uh, can a client update the website? Um, Yes, they can. I talked about that as well. Okay, they, it's really cool. Like you build it in your kind of uh, Webflow, which is a web-based tool and you, you, you get it all, you got a design side and then you've got this thing called the editor and that's the thing that the client uses or the customer uses, whoever you're making the site for. Okay, it might be for somebody in your team or you know, if you're doing your own one for your own site, you don't need it, but it allows them to log in, username, password, change homepage text, change images, add product. Okay, so it's really nice, it's all web-based. Lovely. Um, uh, um, oh yeah, that's a really good point. How much is Webflow? Um, if you're looking to get signed up, go to byol.com slash WF for Webflow. Okay, bringyourlaptop.com slash WF. And before you get started on the course, it's an affiliate link. 
Okay, so there's uh, a discount for you and I get a small commission. So check that out if you do want to sign up for Webflow, use that link first. Um, and join me in the course. The course is at bringyourlaptop.com. It is Webflow Essentials. I just finished making it now. Um, go check it out. Um, what's next? Uh, can I use my own domain in Webflow? You can totally use your own domain. Okay, you get given like a staging domain, which you can use. If you've got like a free site for free people, like you're doing something for your sports team, you can get away with doing a lot for free in Webflow um, without having to sign up for anything or pay for anything. Okay, but if you own your own custom domain name, that's one of the kind of crossovers for um, using the paid service. Okay, and yes, you can use your own domain name. Um, I make one in the course called Daniel Scott Web Design. Dot com, I think, but you can make any uh, existing uh, domain, you know, existing domain or new domain. Okay, um, you can build it, get it set up through WordPress. Sorry, WordPress. I probably said that a few times. Webflow. And um, how much is Webflow? That is a really good question. And um, you can use it for free. So there's two, two parts to it. There's you, the builder. So like having Photoshop or Illustrator or any sort of bit of software. And then there's the website itself. That kind of two costs. So over here is me, okay, as the web designer, and over there, the plant, okay, is going to be our stand-in for our, our client, okay, good looking client. And um, so for me, as a designer, I can work for free up until a point. I can have 10 draft sites on the go, okay, and still not get charged. Where I get charged is if I want to start building sites, I want more than 10 drafts. I can have 100 paid, paid sites going, Okay, they don't mind you staying for free as long as you've got pay, you're producing paid sites, but eventually you run out of the drafts in your site. Okay, you've got 10 clients that haven't finished. Okay, you'll have to then move up to the paid one. It's not crazy expensive. You'll have to check it out on Webflow's pricing. Can't even remember off the top of my head. It's it's in the like $10 a month, and you can go all the way up to paying $50 a month depending on different things you might want. Like. Sometimes white labeling it is really nice to remove anything to do with Webflow so that it looks like your own stuff. You can start moving up in that process. Um, so that's my side. As a designer, I can pay free, uh, but it gets to a point where actually I might wanna, you know, if you're doing this professionally, it's a real um, accessible price, okay? Uh, and I can do that. Now, the other cost is the hosting of the site, okay? Through Webflow. And um, that's up to the client in the end, okay? Uh, if it's your own site, you'll have to pay for it. You have to pay for hosting and domain names. It doesn't matter if you use Webflow or GoDaddy or HostPapa, <laughs> Bluehost, whatever you're using. Okay, so you have to pay for hosting somewhere and a domain name. Um, if you want a site hosted through Webflow, okay, which is recommended using their tools, okay, they, it's an extra cost, okay, and they pay for that. And again, it starts low and depending on how many features you want. If it's just a static site, it's quite cheap. And then if you want a full business with e-commerce and all sorts of other stuff, then you start looking at the like the the more thirty to forty dollars a month for site hosting. Okay, so it's a little bit more expensive than say GoDaddy's cheapest hosting package, but the perks are that um, all of the stuff I build on Webflow is guaranteed to work. There's some other security professional uh, updating my, you know, working on the servers and making sure everything is protected. Okay, which is not the case when you're working on your own server. Knowing how to set up a server can be tricky if you're new to it. So just letting Web, Webflow do it is amazing. So there's two costs. Me, the designer, I might be paying something, okay? But definitely the site, when it goes out, okay, has to be paying its own hosting, and that's through Webflow. And that can be through the 10 to 50. It can go enterprise level as well, okay? But that's a contact us for a pricing one, magic pricing. Um, you have done Webflow versus you. Can a client update the website? Done that one. Can I build membership? Done that one. Is Webflow good for SEO? It's amazing. It's great for like on-page SEO. Uh, it's got like it clearly, it's not a new product. It's newish, but it's um, it's quite got a lot of depth, especially for SEO. Okay, and um, yeah, like I'm reasonably good at SEO, and it's got everything I need plus more. Okay, and if you know anything about SEO, it's more about off-page SEO anyway. Like getting links back to the site is where the real magic happens, but all the on-page stuff, it's perfect for. Um, the difference between Webflow and coding it, which should I learn first? So if you have done my Webflow Essentials course, you will 
be really well set up for Webflow. Can you do Webflow not knowing any code? Yes, that's what I've designed it for. I've, in my head, when I'm making this course, all my essentials, if you've done any before, um, I always make sure that you know my essential courses are for somebody who, you know, if you're a baker or a builder or a candlestick maker, that's not how it goes. But you know, if you've come from like some other crazy industry and nothing to do with web design or design, there's no expectation that you're a great designer. Okay, just starting right at this, talking to everybody. Okay, and we'll build up our skills and by the end of it, you'll be a web designer, I promise. Okay, so there's lots of things to learn, but you don't need any coding experience. But if you do have some coding experience, and uh, you will, there'll be lots of like, ah, aha, uh -huh, I know that. I know what floaters and flex and a few other things. If you've never known, heard those before, okay, don't worry. Don't be scared off by it. I promise I'll start right at the beginning, work our way through step by step. And um, will learning Webflow look good on my CV or resume for future employers or is it more for freelancers? It's, a, it's crossed over now. Like it used to be a way that you could do your own work as a freelancer. Okay, but now uh, it's going into agencies, big and small. Okay, it's going into marketing departments where they don't have to reach out to a developer if they want to build their own marketing site. Okay, and I know through the people and designers I know, they're getting reached out to by recruiters now. Like, hey, I see you've built, you know, it says Webflow on your portfolio or on your CV. Hey, have you got, um, you know, are you looking for work? That type of thing. People are actively looking out for stuff. So, um. Yes, it is one of those things where it's become, uh, it's, you're going to see it, you know, on the, and do Webflow, specifically Webflow, okay, not just web design. So it's cross, crossing that line. So I back it as a great thing to have on your CV, even if you don't really have any plans to build lots of websites, do the course, bring your own laptop.com, uh, link in the description. And do the course just so that you've got an idea of it. See, so when you are looking for those jobs, you can say, look, you know, I've got some experience in Webflow. Here's my certificate. And um, you might not be the world's most experienced, but then you can come back and do the course. Or, yeah, it's one of those super extra Superman features on your portfolio, in my opinion. Uh, well, learning done that one. What is, what's the advantage of learning Webflow when there's website builders that make it easy, like Squarespace and Wix? They are, totally have their space, uh, place in the world. Um, for me, I don't like them personally because what, what I find those are really good for is somebody who really wants a website quickly and doesn't really care about the specific parts. Like they'll, there's amazing templates. They don't look bad on Squareface and Wix. I know though, as soon as I go to a template site and go, that one looks great. I want to change everything. <laughs> and you can change most of it. It's just, I'd rather just start from the beginning. Like if I have to find a website and then hack it to get what I want it to do, it'll take me twice as long than just to build it from scratch because I know exactly what, I, you know, I've designed it somewhere else and I want to do it. So Wix is great if you're a business owner and you're like, I want a cafe. Download cafe template. It's brilliant. Just install it. They host it for you. It does lots of things. Takes payments, scheduling, all that sort of stuff. Whereas Webflow is, I want a cafe, but here's my branding, here's my messaging, this is what I wanted to do, I don't want to do that, but I want to do this, and I want to bring that to the front, and uh, actually I want to change that now, that's where Webflow is amazing, okay? And it will still do the bookings and schedulings and payments, but it's a little bit more customized, more professional. It's easier to go to somebody and be confident about, of course I can build that. Whereas if you have the skills of Webflow, sorry, of Wix and Squarespace, it'd be like, yeah, I can build that. Hopefully you like, I'll give you some, you know, give you some ideas of what it could look like and you have to pick one. Um, whereas I'm a graphic designer, will I be able to learn Webflow? Is it hard? It is not hard. Um, if you're a graphic designer, if you're anybody, Webflow is pretty, they've, they've aimed it at the everyman that is prepared to learn. Because, like I said, some of the other um, drag and drop ones are just drag and drop. You don't have to learn a whole lot. You have to figure out where things are, uh, are stored and where the buttons are. But Webflow, there's a, there's a bit of learning. Like, we have to learn what responsive design is. And for me, I love a learning it and teaching it. Okay, so there is learning involved. Like, it's not just uh, WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Um, but it's, 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 not, it's not at the level of, I, I, you know, I want to be a web developer or a, you know, or an engineer. 
and I need to like learn programming to then do stuff. It's actually learning how things work so that I can move it around and adjust it and understand it. Yes, that's my understanding. All right, I'm coming to the end of my questions if you've got more. Um, do you need to know HTML and CSS to work with Webflow? No, but you'll learn it as part of the course a little bit. Okay, uh, do I need UI or UX, UX skills in Webflow? No, okay, the handy skills. Okay, if I was gonna do it, I'd probably learn uh, Figma or XD, or both of them. They kind of do the same thing, and then learn Webflow. That's not uh, essential though. You can just strump, jump straight into Webflow if you're like, oh, I've got a Photoshop mock-up that I wanna make, or I just wanna make something. Just get in there and start doing it. You don't need UI UX skills. They are super helpful, okay, because that's the design side. Remember, Webflow is more the build side. Um, do I need to know how to use Figma or XD? We talked about that. Do I need to know After Effects to make animations in Webflow? Um, After Effects, no. There's lots of cool um, animation that you can just dump in. There is lots of, like I'll show you, in the course we do animation, and a no. You don't need to go to any outside program. You just use Webflow to do animation. Um, you can use Web, uh, After Effects to do some fancy um, Lottie animations, but it's outside of the scope of this course and not needed. There's so much good stuff inside of Webflow. Um, we do cool parallax things, and uh, if you go to the Webflow website, okay, and the homepage, that'll show you some of the kind of like cool animations it'll do. Actually, check out, um, go to byol.com slash WF, okay, if you are gonna go to Webflow and get going in there, it's my affiliate link, it'll give you a discount. And a little bit comes back to me too. Um, but um, yeah, there's lots of cool animation stuff that Webflow does. All right, questions from the audience. Get yours in, come in now. So Ocean uh, Ganata, Ganata, Ganatra. Uh, why do Webflow agencies charge a lot for simple things? It's just hot at the moment and like all things, it is hard to find somebody who's doing it and the people doing it are charging a premium that's why it is good to learn and why agencies are charging a lot because there's just too much work and not enough people. And the old, and the old uh, capitalist marketplace is why. It's not because it's, I don't know, costs anybody anymore, but to hire a Webflow designer right now costs you more than hiring, let's say, a WordPress developer. Just more WordPress developers around than there are Webflow designers. There you go. Um, what is it? L Luis Kurt, can't see the first letter. <laughs> Taylor, did you delete the first letter or is that a lowercase l? You gotta move your cursor. It's Louise Kurt, there you go. Uh, can we create a special account for users and clients in the editor? Yep. So you give them accounts, you give them, you can say you are an admin, you can change anything. You are the untrustworthy new person. You can adjust one thing and then to actually publish on the site, you need to send it back to the admin who then verifies the thing that you've changed because we don't trust you. <laughs> so yeah, there's lots of cool stuff. Like that's what's really good about it. There's permissions. You can say, this guy can be admin, this girl can be, you know, access to these pages, but not that. Everyone other than this other person can publish directly to the site, but everyone else needs to like ask for permission and that person can check it before it publishes. That's a great question. Billy, um, uh, Chakra, um, question to grab. Why focusing on Webflow rather than on Bootstrap? I've just finished your HTML Essentials course, by the way, thanks. It's just another way of building, I guess. It's just super popular as well. And yeah, why Webflow over Bootstrap? No real reason. Hey, Bootfra uh, Bootstrap is just a framework for helping you design websites. It doesn't do where it, where Webflow is quite amazing is that it does, like we just talked about in the last question, and it talks about you know adding users and permissions to those users. It's a very different thing. Bootstrap helps you design stuff real quickly, okay, JavaScript and CSS libraries, whereas this is, uh, Webflow is kind of a more, a larger product. There you go. Hope you're enjoying the course, Billy. And um, Chloe, uh, does this cover all the topics needed to build a site for clients? Also, do you cover things like adding a store or memberships? Yes, 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 not memberships yet because it's not out yet, but I'll get to that once it's been released. So yeah, 100%, do this course, you will be able to take on work, okay? 
um, from a client. I bet you you'll feel confident as well because we build four sites and as long as your client has one of those four, it's pretty like, it's a static site, you're gonna sell it no problem. If it's uh, a site where there's blog posts and those sorts of things, I wouldn't take it on as my first job, but you will have the skills for it. I'd like to take on a smaller project first, take a friends and family or your own portfolio on first, and then look at something that requires dynamic content, okay, where somebody has to uh, upload products or posts or informations or, you know, lists of people or any of that sort of more database driven stuff. But you can totally do it after this course. Good question, Lovey. Uh, Chloe. Uh, Alan, does Webflow offer really, really good support? I'm a long time print designer and struggle with web design. Yes. Like, first of all, if you do the course, um, especially on bringyourlaptop.com, um, Stephen and his rock stars are amazing at getting back to, you, and they're all doing the course now as well, um, so that they can get up to speed with it. Okay, and we've got web designers as teaching assistants to help you through the course. So as long as you're a member, if you, you stay a member for Bring Your Laptop, sign up for the annual one. You know, it's like $84, and you can get like there's support from those guys. Webflow has good support as well. If it's something technical, like hey, it's not working, you go to them. But if it's like hey, I don't know how to do this thing or I'm doing this course and I'm a bit, you know, stuck because <laughs> web design and your brain does not work very well, okay, those guys are there to help you. So Stephen Butler and his um, TAs will be there. Uh, Stefan and John and Emma and Dave, they're all around to answer your questions. Billy, what are the main cons for working with Webflow in your opinion? Uh, the cons, it's more expensive than doing it all yourself, let's say coding it and hosting it somewhere else because you get to control, you get to look for the, the cheapest option because you can do everything. But it kind of, then the balance is, is that Webflow is more expensive, but there is people dedicated to security and to making sure that everything is up to date, building new features that you can access that doesn't break it. Um, so yeah, that's, and it just, it, and it means that I don't need, the cost of having a developer help build, let's say a CMS, for products to be sold on a site, I don't need that cost, okay? There's lots of jobs that will need a developer. It's not the end of developers, but there's some jobs you actually, I'm gonna sell t-shirts, I'm gonna sell coffee, I'm gonna sell a booking system, I wanna schedule for my yoga uh, instructing thing. That's something that Webflow can do and I don't need to go out to somebody else because it's, it's you know, there's not a lot. It, it's a road already traveled by Webflow and I can just, cost more, but, I can do it all and they've got all the structure to there for me to do it. Any other cons for using Webflow? I don't know, it's pretty nice. It's like trickier to learn than say Wix or Squarespace. If you've used those, you know, or even WordPress. Okay, WordPress just in the install it using the back end. Okay, once you've figured out where everything is, it's all you need to really do for those sites. Like how do I change this? And there's an option to change it. Whereas Webflow, there's a little bit more knowledge needed for like, okay, I want this to, when it gets down to mobile, to go underneath and then turn off, okay, or maybe turn off or get smaller or actually make the text a bit bigger on this one or let's move the map up here on mobile, but on desktop I'd like, you want to do all that. There's a little bit of learning about that, understanding what responsive design is, what a grid system is and how that works, how do I make sure my images uh, are good so they load fast, whereas some of those other sites will do a little bit of that for you without asking, um, the trouble is, is that you can't change it either. So it's a, there's a little bit more learning in Webflow. Um, uh, Sirius PR, is Webflow still limited when it comes to JavaScript? I know back in the day, it was a nightmare to add custom JavaScript projects. They've done it pretty nicely. There's a, um, the cool thing about Webflow now is they allow kind of in-page injection of JavaScript and lots of other code that you can put on the page, but it has to be per page. You can't do it globally, which is, maybe one of the drawbacks, but no, they, it would depend on, on what you're trying to do with the JavaScript, um, but no, they allow you to inject a lot of uh, custom code onto a site. And that brings up another good point, like let's say you do want to do it, but it's just this one thing it won't do, okay? You can find developers that will help you work with Webflow, and unlike some of the other platforms that they won't touch, because, you know, it's locked down, okay, you can't change it, um, Squarespace allows you to inject a lot of code onto a page to, you know, say you do it, but it doesn't do this one thing, okay? Uh, one bit of animation or one bit of stock control or something else that it needs to do. You can ask a developer like, hey, this is what it is. And, you know, this is what I'm using. Can you look at it? Can you, you know, 
can we add something to the head tag or to the body so it can do this other thing? And they can do it without knowing Webflow, okay? Just regular old web design. So it's pretty, um, yeah, pretty good that way. Um, winners, uh, should uh, we learn UX, UI design first before learning Webflow? In, you should, you don't have to. Yep. So UX, UI, if you're unsure about it, it's kind of like the, but let's talk about user experience. It's about design and working out. It's about getting the brief, working out who it's for, getting really clear about the, the design, what it does, do, you know, does it does it do what we need to do? Let's get it in the hands of the people that are going to use it and do a lot of testing before we go and build it. Whereas if you go straight into Webflow, it's fine. You can build it, but you might end up doing something that that is really easy to test in in a UX design program like Figma or XD. Really easy to go out and test, and you you know you can make three or four different versions of it and test them to see which one either is better for conversion or sign up or people are able to navigate it easier. Okay, you can do that really quickly um, if you've got experience with UX and UI, okay, using maybe a bit of software like Figma or Adobe XD. Okay, um, that's quick and easy there, hard to do in Webflow if you have to readjust the site because you spend ages designing it. So do that first, Webflow second. If you just want to build a website, which I did for a long time before I got involved in UX, just go and build it in Webflow. Nobody, the UX design police will not come and find you. Um, Michael Bell, um, oh, Michelle Bell. Uh, I am so thankful for Dan Scott, hey, and his classes, that's me. I am so much more confident now and I in the great northwest of Washington state. Hope it's sunny there. Does it get, <laughs> I'm sure it does get sunny up there. Um, awesome, um, you're very welcome. That's, I guess that's what I really want from Webflow as well is that I want you to get to the end of it and go, I'm a web designer, okay? You're not a web developer, okay? You're not a copy and paste charlatan either. You are doing, like Webflow's become this thing where you're actually building really useful, uh, you know, uh, sites. Like I've had developers look at the things that are being built and they're totally legit. The code's, you know, not a joke. It's nice and clean. They can work on it, okay, and help you out with it. And you will end this, hopefully, with the confidence to say, hang out your shingle and say, I'm a web designer, with some confidence, okay? So that's, I guess that's my, that's my, that's my goal as an instructor, to kind of try and demystify and distill and hopefully give everybody a bit more courage in, in design. Um, so thanks for that. Um, Gambo Master, uh, can you build an e-commerce site in Webflow and how do you compare it with WooCommerce? Do you have control over source code in Webflow? So, a few questions. Can you build an e-commerce site? Totally can. How do you compare it to WooCommerce? WooCommerce is a lot broader and bigger and more in depth, whereas Webflow is, I wouldn't be tight, like, a, yeah. You can, like, let's say that you do have products to sell. You can export the database and import it into Webflow, but it's not a dynamic stock control thing at the moment, okay? It's a little bit more like, you can remove stock and stuff, but there's a, WooCommerce is way more designed specifically for larger companies, okay? But you can do media, small to medium, let's say, e-commerce sites. Absolutely, 100%. It's when it gets tricky and there's like, oh, but we use Sage and we use these other things and it needs to connect to our CRM as well. That's when WooCommerce is better and broader and nicer. Um, do you have control of the source code in Webflow? It basically just produces a website like any other website. You can see it all. Um, you don't have control of the database. You control it through Webflow. So like, they try and make it a bit more um, accessible for people. They also do things like, Instead of like building a you know um, MySQL database and trying to work out and lo you know set up a local host and do all that sort of stuff, you just go in and say, oh, I want a collection, which is the nice way of a database. And in that collection, I'm going to have items in my collection. Okay, and you can decide a lot of things, but it's uh, I guess it's it's a, a layer on top of a database. You don't have access to it, but you can make it do the things, the normal things that you want to do with products and content that are built dynamically in a CMS. That answers. Osmini Cardoza, um, how long does the course 
run for. It's 111 videos. They're about five to 10 videos each. Generally, it takes people, like the hardcore people that are starting already, they'll be done in a couple of weeks. Um, but generally, if you pod along, do it in the evenings, do the assignments, wait for feedback, it generally can take a month or two. Realistically, you, you could do it in a week or two, okay? But it depends if you're doing this full-time. If you're doing full-time, you know, um, yeah, you can smash it out in a week, but you're probably not going to, and it's quite broad. The thing is with it, though, is that it's kind of four lots, right? We build this first thing, uh, you know, after the first, say, 15 videos, but there's 111, so you can build a full full website and then decide that that's enough. <laughs> that's all you want to do, is just to build a static website, but then, I don't know, you'll be like me. You're like, ooh, we know this now. We'll build on top of that, and then we'll build on top of that, and we'll build on top of that, and, I don't know, hopefully not get bored to tears. Try and make them fun. Um, Emmanuel Oza, Ozwaru, um, what is the learning curve for Webflow like? It is easy, it's about like Photoshop. It's like Photoshop. Whereas you can do the easy things easy, okay? And then the hard things require a little bit of explanation of like, why does it do it this way? So it's not, su it's not super easy. I'm trying to think of like a super easy program that I teach. I feel like XD and Figma are a lot more, you could bang around in it and do all right. Okay, without any help and kind of get started-ish, okay? But you should do my Webflow NXD course. Uh, sorry, my Figma NXD course. Um, but you can kind of like, meh, kind of do stuff. Like you, like some of you using Photoshop out there, you'd be like, ah, I can open stuff and do some basic stuff, okay? But if you want to go to any sort of um, professional level, there's a, there's a bit of a learning curve. But hopefully broken into nice little chunks that you can do it. So it's not drag and drop. There is a bit of learning to go. Uh, Ayo Abina, what's the time are we at? We are at that time. Mm -hmm. Can't I can't read the 24 hour clock. <laughs> Gotta check my phone. Ah, we're good. We'll go for another couple of minutes. Uh, any more questions, throw them up. Um, Ayo Abina, Bina, is Webflow compatible with Windows Service Pro? I don't, yes, it is. Uh, it's web-based, so it's not a desktop app. You use a website, kind of like Figma if you've used it. Okay, it's web-based totally, okay. There you go, um, which is weird. It's taking me a little while to get used to web-based software, but it's totally brilliant. And you're building websites. Why not use a web browser to do it? Um, uh, Mahidi, um, oh, that disappeared. Um, hey Dan, uh, do we need to learn HTML and CSS or JavaScript to make more custom websites or no need? No need. Um, it's it's all very low code, no code, okay? It's all, you don't actually type any code. It is lots of buttons and dragging out. You need to understand what's going on. Like if you wanna make a grid that, you know, that adjusts, you need to understand what's going on, but you don't actually have to code anything. So no uh, HTML, um, CSS, or JavaScript is needed. Understanding those things makes it easier because you're like, all right, I wanna make style something. People out there understand CSS. Let's do that, okay? If you, you can make a class, something that will style all your headings, every single heading, okay? And then, but on this other page, I want to style it slightly differently. So you've made it all bold and big and green, but on this page, I want it to be bold and big and purple. So you have this overall class, okay, a global class, and then you have a class that is specifically for your contact us page, where it's purple, okay? That is a combo class. Okay, so if you know CSS, you kind of, you know, you can probably see the structure. You've got these kind of like broad global classes and then you've got specific, um, you know, uh, classes. Uh, did I explain that right? So yeah, <laughs> I'll explain this better in the course, I promise. But um, you don't need to know it. It does make it easier though to understand it. Um, um, Heidi, hey Dan, do we need to, I've done that one. Uh, frying 2012, uh, how is Webflow doing with accessibility? It's pretty good and um, it's pretty baked into it. There's a lot of the kind of simple things that get neglected or get done afterwards, like things like color, contrast ratios. They're actually just built in to Webflow and they've got a chunk of um, all the kind of traditional accessibility stuff in there is in there, okay, in terms of like how a site reads, you know, how people can tab along to the different things, alt tags and all those sorts of things are in there. 
Yeah, it is pretty good. It's, yeah, yeah, it's really good. There you go. Uh, Zane, once built, can you move your website to a different platform? Depends on how far you go. It's a good question. So if you build a static website, yep, grab it, stick it on any host you like. And if you want to start using their CMS and database stuff, it doesn't like kick out the database. It's part of Webflow. Okay, so if you've got a store or um, let's say, a, I use blog a few times, but let's say you've got a site where you know, the client can update the blog, you can't export the blog. You can export all the HTML and CSS and JavaScript from like the static parts, okay? But any sort of database or CMS interaction has to be with Webflow. You can't like export it, use it somewhere else, you know, change the code and import it again. It's kind of Webflow only. But there is an option to say export code from website as long as you're not using their database. Truth Seeker Man, uh, can you develop a Webflow site template and use it in an existing Squarespace plan? No. Um, no, no. You can export a, like, you can export a, a website, like I said, but just HTML and CSS, not a, like a template for Squarespace. Um, Renza, can I transfer my site running on WordPress to Webflow? Nope, that is one of the tricky, they've got some stuff to export you know, there are some companies that are doing Webflow to um, WordPress to Webflow, okay, in terms of some parts of it to check out. It's tricky. So no, it's better to build a site from scratch, which is gonna be a big problem for a lot of people, but they are trying to find ways of getting Webflow, uh, WordPress into Webflow, and some parts do. Have a little look. Um, there are some documents online of like, what parts of WordPress can be just like sucked into WordPress, okay, in terms of the content, because that's what you really want, right? You want all the, if you've got a thousand blog posts, that's something that can be moved across using like a third party app. I've seen them out there, I haven't used them, but there's no like just make Webflow yet. Um, let's do, let's do, what do we have? Let's do three more questions and then we'll go. Um, first of all though, before we do the last two <laughs> questions is, if you want to, if you want to learn Webflow, check out my course. It's called Webflow Essentials. It's on bringyourlaptop.com. And um, yep, sign up for that and join me in the course. If you, yeah, there you go. And um, Chi Bulky, without knowledge of coding HTML and CSS, another website, and other website idea, can I dev and Webflow easily? Yes, it's built for somebody who doesn't have any coding knowledge and my course is aimed at people for no coding knowledge. It is easier if you have coding knowledge, because it is. Um, but the course or workflow is not designed for people with experience in those things. Um, yeah. Uh, Shadow Alice, um, with going to be a Webflow advanced course. Yeah, we'll see how Essentials goes in terms of popularity. I've got kind of an outline for Webflow advanced and we'll just kind of see if it's needed and people want it. Um, Joe Robinson, uh, can I get a career out of this course? Totally, if you want to become a web designer, Webflow is a way of doing it. Will it give you the tools to, yeah, will it give you tools to build, to be a web designer? Totally, you can build quite complex sites, quite amazing looking sites, or by just knowing Webflow, you totally can. A lot of people are doing it. Uh, last one, Louise Kurt, can we manage email marketing through Webflow? They don't do that. They allow easy plugins to things like um, MailChimp, what I use. So they integrate with that, but they don't do it as part of it. They don't, yeah, they don't do email marketing. They allow you to integrate lots of other products. So if you're using, yeah, WordPress or, in the course we do WordPress and Calendly and a few other social things. What else do we integrate it with? Can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, integrates with lots. Uh, um, let's do one more. Last one. Promise. Uh, Sophia, does the course also teach uh, teach user flow, like how and most favorable designs basics that make the site traffic uh, attractive? I always make sure when I'm designing, we're not just learning software, we're trying to incorporate design and design theory uh, to a degree, but no, it's that, that style of thing about user flow is more the Figma or Adobe XD courses that I've got. Um, that's where we're talking more about the UX process. Webflow is more the building of a site. 
we do fold, I do fold stuff into it, but it's not as explicitly outlined as in uh, Figma and Adobe XD. All right, my friends, that is it. That is the q and It's been a long one. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope to see you in my Webflow Essentials course on bringerandlaptop.com. Uh, anything else? Socials in the description. So follow me on the various socials. There's Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and our awesome Facebook group. And um, so anything else? That is it. I think that is it, my friends. All right. Hi, did I good people? I will see you in the course. Bye now. Moves over, clicks the button, double click, broadcasting.